Fury, Tim Hughes. Introducing first, standing on my right and fighting out of the black corner, one of the world's bright young talents coming off of a big Glory 9 victory. His professional record, 40 wins with nine losses, three and one in his Glory career. He stands six feet five inches tall, 1.96 meters, and he weighed in at 257 and one half pounds, 116.7 kilos, fighting tonight out of the Netherlands and ranked number six in the world. Here is Rico. Here now his opponent fighting out of the white corner, a WFCA World Heavyweight Thai Boxing Champion. His record truly impressive, 79 wins with just 16 losses, 56 wins by knockout. He stands six feet even, 1.83 meters, and he weighed in at fight time at 226 and one half pounds, 102.7 kilos, fighting out of Turkey and ranked number two in the Glory World Rankings. Ladies and gentlemen, go Khan, the Rebel Saki! The referee for this contest is Chris Wagner. Right here. Saki. All right, gentlemen, you got your instructions in the dressing room. I want a nice, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. In case of a knockdown, go to the neutral corner I tell you to go to. Remain there until I call you out. Any questions over here? Any questions over here? Fight fair, fight hard. Touch gloves. Yeah. Referee Chris Wagner with last minute instructions. Duke back Rufus, off, I know off, this is a big off, moment off. for you and your entire family. World class kickboxing coming to American Any Network more. Television. All I can say, it's going to be fireworks. This is going to be insane. You're, you've never seen fighting Fight. like this on U.S. Network, so get ready, fans. The bell, and we are underway with the first semifinal matchup in the Glory Heavyweight Tournament. Three three-minute rounds. As the favorite, Gokan Saki immediately going on the attack with a crisp punching combination against the bigger Verhoeven, and that is rolled a... Oh, and Saki taking umbrage with the referee, Wagner, who ruled that a knockdown. Duke, do you agree? I didn't think so. I thought it was a but he has to be careful. Angles. He could have been disqualified for pushing the referee. Yes, but he's going to get his composure. He's got to get. Now he's got to get this point back. He's got to either drop him to make it even or win the round. And he is in danger because two knockdowns in any single round in the tournament will be well constituted as a TKO or three knockdowns in a single bout will be terminated and it will be ruled a technical knockout. So Saki already behind the eight ball here early in round one. Yeah, he just needs to get busy. Don't worry about it. You know, he's got three rounds to get it done. You know, he's got to get active. You know, he's definitely, it was a tough call, but he's a professional. Barry Rubin definitely, he's going to enjoy this edge right now. You can see the speed advantage of it, Masaki. Left in the opening round, the bigger Verhoeven walking down. Saki, who is along the ropes, lead left hook to the shoulder there by Saki. Whips a outside low kick to Verhoeven. Verhoeven makes it almost as going for a front kick. Here, just past the midway point of the opening round. Saki already being knocked down once. Again, a ruling by referee Chris Wagner. Saki began kickboxing at the age of 11, also played soccer, but gave up that sport at 16 because he enjoyed kickboxing so much and decided to spend all of his time on it. A smart decision. As you look at the results of the crowd, starts chanting, Saki is there, hoping on the attack. Rico Balboa looking to shock the world. Inside low kick by Verhoeven has Saki along the ropes. Step back, step back, Verhoeven started martial arts training at the age of seven. In his four glory appearances, more than half of his 219 landing strikes have been leg strikes. 30 seconds left in the opening round. A good start for the Prince of Kickboxing. I agree. I think Saki's a little tight right now and he needs to take advantage of it and press the action. 
Front kick by Verhoeven. 15 seconds left in the round. Body kick by Verhoeven. Counter left hand by Saginaw. He goes to the body block. The clinch broken up by the referee Chris Wagner. Again, you have two seconds in the clinch to deliver a knee striker. It will be terminated. Inside low kick and a left hook by Verhoeven. Great start for Verhoeven in this semifinal matchup as the Glory Girls make their appearance known. Mike Passenier, one of the top kickboxing coaches out of Mike's gym. And here we go, Duke. You tell us if this was a knockdown. It was a right hand that connected. No, it was a slip. He got bumped. And there he, he was. He has to be very careful with that yes. kind of behavior. But here's another look at it, a little better angle. Now it was on the shoulder, and it just, it, it, it was a push down, if anything. In, in kickboxing, they're barefoot, and you don't have the grip that you do, yeah, shoulder shot. You don't have the grip that you do with a boxing shoe on, on that canvas. So that, that's why you, you got to be careful. The referee's got to really watch if there was damage inflicted, not just the doubt. According to our strike stats, Verhoeven doubled Saki and power strikes landed eight to four in that opening three minutes. Fight! The bell and round two. Verhoeven in the black rub, Saki in the white. Outside low kick by Saki, countered by an inside kick by Verhoeven who goes upstairs with a punching combination. Jab through the guard by Verhoeven. There's a jab to the body. Saki coming forward with a couple of lead left hooks that miss, but then lands a left body kick under the armpit and follows up with a left hook to the head. Verhoeven needs to keep on that jab. Saki needs to keep on his combinations. He needs to be relentless here. Don't let this kid settle in and get his confidence. Verhoeven seems to be getting his confidence, and it's making him dangerous like this. You read the body language, it appears that Verhoeven is the confident one, and what you said in the opening round, Saki appears to be a little tight. Yes, I mean, under the big lights of America here on Spike TV, uh, it, it can get under your skin. And again, he is the favorite in this tournament. The number two ranked heavyweight behind Glory Heavyweight Lee, Champion Semi Shilter's future remains uncertain. Talk that he may be retiring. Left hook to the body and a left hook upstairs by Saki. They're moving with a slight edge in the total strikes landed thus far in the fight. Up the middle by Verhoeven. Smothers him with the jab. Just past the midway point. Lead left hook by Saki. Blocked by Verhoeven again. Sweeps the leg and again. No throws or sweeps allowed. In glory. This is a nice low kick. It hurt him too. Inside low kick by Verhoeven. Checked by Saki. Oh, and that may have been south of the equator. And Saki again over aggressive. And the crowd reacts. Well, protect yourself at all times, they say, in the fight game. And he will have up to five minutes to recover. I understand. I said, it's a caution. Don't let it happen again. Don't let it happen again. Wait, you got five minutes. You hit him low. Stay low. You ready? You good? Yes? Ready? Let's go. There was the left kick that caught him in the cup as the action resumes here at the Sears Center Arena. First semifinal of the one night four man heavyweight tournament. The winner must win two fights in one night. Walks away with the belt and the $250,000 grand prize as Saki now begins to put together his punching combinations. Going behind the guard with a left hook of the right hand. And now Verhoeven off balance with that right hand along the ropes as Saki is on the prowl. Well, that's the Turkish Tyson we were talking about. The global audiences are going to see some great fights tonight and some great action. Left hand by Saki fighting on the southpaw stance. People don't realize how much athleticism it takes to, to punch and kick like they are uh, in different angles. Five or ten punch. seconds of the round. Better round for Saki. Right hand through the gun and a spinning kick at the end of the round. Dat is nog steeds te snel voor. En als hij ziet.
Here's a couple different looks at Saki's right hand. There he is attacking, and wow, clipped him with that one. Super last round, last slow. Round. And now he's using this right hand to put Verhoeven on the defense, keep him on the ropes, and that's how he's going to be successful. He's got to back this big young kid up. Big spin kick again, keeping Verhoeven off guard and, and not on the offense. And after Verhoeven double touch, Saki and power strikes in the opening round. Saki returned the favor in the second round, doubling Verhoeven 14 to 7 in total punches landed in that second stanza. The bell in the third and final round. The winner moving on to the final later tonight. Saki is going to hope for in this round that that's the sense he can make it the fight and draw a little sudden victory. So that's how you have it on your unofficial scorecard? I, I believe Saki won that last round. So we're, we're going in still with the first round and the knockdown score that they're moving up. So Saki's got to win this round just to tie and then go into sudden victory or KO. That is the drama of the tournament. you got to love it. Saki's starting to switch his stance a little bit he's used very moving. What he's doing is stepping an angle and the hook over very moving's left guard to try and catch his blind spot. There he goes again, like that. Saki again on the south pass stance. Verhoeven coming over top with the right hand. One minute gone in the final round. That high kick blocked by Saki. Saki back to an orthodox stance, a couple of left hooks behind the guard, Verhoeven with a low kick. Now he doubles up on the jab. High kick blocked by Saki, or excuse me, Verhoeven delivered by Saki. The power of Verhoeven is undeniable. You see he's moving to Saki every time he kicks him, which stops him from being able to block back. Sometimes even when you kick the guard, it's going to stop a good puncher from being able to punch back. Those, those shin kicks are important to stop a good puncher. And yet only 10 of his 40 victories will come via form of knockout as he gets his head popped there with a jab by Saki. There's a left hook to deliver by Verhoeven. A very competitive contest to begin this one night four man glory heavyweight tournament as Saki avoids that head kick. One minute left in the fight. Who wants it more? Who wants to make a definitive statement in this opening scrap? That victory from Verhoeven. A very spirited effort by the youngster Prince of Kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. Saki appeared to be tight in the opening moments of the fight, but seemed to come on. But a very close encounter. And it could even be going to extra rounds. It's all up to the three judges here in Chicago. 
If after three rounds the judge's decision is a draw, an extra sudden death victory round will be contested again when you look at the scoring criteria here in glory. It's prioritized with knockdowns being number one, and there was that controversial knockdown in the opening round by Verhoeven. Yeah, it was a tough knockdown, but that's the way they scored it. I, I didn't think it was a knockdown, but I'm not, I'm not the ref. I wasn't in there with them. And we'll be back in a minute to get our decision. So the crowd here anticipating the decision. Saki waiting for his fate in this tournament again, coming in the favorite. Disrespecting everybody in the rest of the uh, field by saying that, you know, he's knocked out Anderson Silva, he's defeated Gita twice, and he said that Verhoeven was not that good, just a hard worker. Verhoeven promised to smash Saki. Didn't exactly smash him, but he did account, give a very good accounting of himself here in this first of two semi-final bouts in the Glory Heavyweight Tournament. So we are set for the official decision here at the Sears Center Arena in Chicago, the opening semifinal of the Glory Heavyweight Tournament. Let's go to Tim Hughes with the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we send it to the judges' scorecard. Judge Sal Diamato scores the bout 29-27. Judge Bastian Kester scores the bout 29-28. Judge Dave Smith scores the bout even 28-28. It is a majority decision for your winner, Rico Setting the apple card in this tournament. He upsets the number two ranked Gokan Saki. Verhoeven is on his way to the final. Let's go up to Ron Kruk, who's standing by with the winner. Rico Verhoeven, you just pulled off a massive upset. Give us your thoughts on this fight. Why do you feel the judges awarded you this victory? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, for my feeling, I also, uh, I am the winner. The first eight countdown, yeah, was a little bit like I was, yeah, surprised as well. But uh, yeah, if the the ref sees it like that, he's the, yeah, he's the boss uh, between the, between the ropes. So he decides what happens. And yeah, for the rest, I just did what I supposed to do against the small, faster guy. That's kick, 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 kick. Right. Makes sure he's getting a little bit slower. And that's what happened. But I'm uh, I'm happy to say that uh, I. Uh, I will, uh, yeah, come to fight him again one time. Coming out of this, any tournament, uh, injuries can play a factor physically. How are you feeling going three rounds? Feeling awesome. I feel I'm still, still fit, so ready for the next fight. And that next fight, you'll be matched up with either Anderson Silva or Daniel Gita. Who would you prefer to fight and why? Uh, it doesn't matter. They're both great fighters. I respect them both a lot. And... Uh, yeah, I hope the best man wins. Very good. We'll see you in the finals. Thank you. See you. All right, guys. Huge upset to start the evening off. Morrow and Duke, back to you.